Hi, this is Mr. Evans. This video looks at monetary policy. So, um, as part of our assessment of the economic environment and the opportunities and threats that are presented by changes in the economic environment, uh, you need to be aware of uh, monetary policy and how changes in monetary policy may create opportunities and threats for businesses. So, monetary policy um, involves, uh, let's just take a step back for a second actually. So the government has got four macroeconomic objectives, economic growth, full employment, price stability, and the balance of payments. And the government has got three tools that they can use in order to achieve this. Fiscal and monetary policy are the two that are listed in the specification. We've also mentioned supply side policies, which are policies that basically make it easier for businesses to operate things like infrastructure spending. Um, making the economy work more efficiently. Um, but the two you need to be aware of are fiscal and monetary policy. And monetary policy involves managing the supply of money in order to influence the economy. So um, here's our circular flow of income with each of these um, flows of money represent, uh, each of these arrows, sorry, representing a flow of money either around the economy between businesses and individuals or being withdrawn or injected into the economy. Now, at some point, the economy will be performing badly in a slowdown or a recession, in which case um, it would be beneficial for us to increase the money, the money supply, the money going into uh, the economy to try and get things moving a bit faster, to get businesses um, uh, to get households purchasing more from businesses, to get businesses giving more um, money to households through creation of jobs and so on and so forth. Sometimes the economy is going a bit too well and households are demanding too much from businesses and businesses can't keep up, which pushes prices up, which is inflationary. Okay, now then, um, if we take some money out of the uh, circular flow of income, if we can withdraw some money, uh, now that will help slow the economy down and help bring inflation back under control. Okay, so we looked at how fiscal policy is uh, using the government to do that. Uh, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the government to try and influence the economy. Okay, we can't really do anything about um, trade with abroad or we might be able to do a little bit about it but uh, monetary policy um, involves using banks and taking money out through savings and investing uh, it as an injection to the economy so if we need to take money out if the economy is going too quickly we we'll want to withdraw some get people to save some money in banks and uh, if we want a bit more money in the economy we would uh, look at trying to get people to borrow money uh, businesses to invest more. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, um, what's the aim of monetary policy? So the predominant aim of monetary policy is actually price stability. That was mandated to the Bank of England in 1997 by Gordon Brown. In other words, Gordon Brown uh, said to the Bank of England, um, I'm going to give you the target of um, creating the economic environment where inflation is at 2%. We've talked about why 2% might be a bit of a magic number in terms of inflation. Prices increasing by 2% a year. This allows businesses to make some price rises, increase their profitability, pay their workers a bit more, pay their shareholders a bit more. Um, but it's not. It, prices aren't rising so quickly in that environment that consumers start to panic and lose confidence. Uh, they'll, they'll still go out and spend their money. In fact, it creates an incentive to spend money because um, consumers will want to spend money before prices increase. So, um, price stability is the predominant aim of monetary policy because it's considered if there's price stability, there can be economic growth and full employment. Um, so it helps the government to achieve their objectives. Now, who does this? I'll come back to that in a second. How is it done? It's done through controlling the interest rates, uh, the cost of borrowing and the reward for saving. And this is the main tool of monetary policy you need to be aware of because interest rates, of course, dictate how much uh, money people want to save. 
and it dictates the cost of borrowing, how much money businesses are borrowing uh, to invest. Okay, so interest rates are the main um, uh, weapon of monetary policy or the main tool used by monetary policy. Okay, um, make sure you understand this definition, especially those bits that are underlined, because that's going to be really important when you're analysing how changes in interest rate might affect the economy. Quantitative easing is another tool that the government can use. It basically involves creating new money. Um, I won't go into it in a huge amount of detail. Um, uh, it's not listed on the specification, but it is another tool of monetary policy. Well, who does it? Well, I mentioned that Gordon Brown mandated the Bank of England with this 2% inflation target. Um, the interest rate for the UK, the base interest rate, is set by the Monetary Policy Committee at the Bank of England, who meet eight times a year. Uh, there are nine members of the Monetary Policy Committee uh, because they have to vote on what to do to the interest rate. Um, and if there's nine of them, obviously it's less likely they're going to have a, um, an equal split where five of them want to do something, five of them want to do something else. And uh, interest rates can remain the same, they can be put up, or they can be put down, depending on the needs of the economy. Okay, so the main aim of monetary policy is price stability. The monetary policy at the Bank of uh, the Monetary Policy Committee at the Bank of England meet to tr set the interest rate. Okay, so they can achieve this aim. So let's just say inflation is running at five percent. Okay, it's above their inflation target of 2%. The Monetary Policy Committee want to bring inflation down. Now, what are they going to do with interest rates? Okay, well, they're going to put interest rates up. Now, why is that? Well, as we know from our definition, interest rates are the cost of borrowing and the reward for saving. And if you're ever explaining in a question uh, the impact of changing interest rates on business, the line of analysis is to go down both of these routes, okay? Um, so, um, if interest rates go up, what happens to the cost of borrowing? Okay, what happens to the amount of debt, uh, the debt burden faced by people? Well, if interest rates go up, the cost of borrowing has increased, okay? The reward for saving also increases, okay? So, I'm if the interest rate is put up, I'm put off borrowing because it's more expensive, it's going to increase my debt. Uh, if I've got things like a mortgage, I'm going to have to pay back more back on my mortgage. If I've got credit card debt, I'm going to have to pay more back on that. And it's more rewarding for me to save money. Okay, so what's going to happen, uh, going back to our little model of the economy, to this savings, the money being withdrawn from the economy? Well, obviously, um, that's increased. There's less money being injected into the economy because we're not borrowing as much. So what's the overall effect on consumption? Well, it should be fairly obvious that, you know, these people who are thinking of holidays or uh, purchasing uh, new cars, new clothes, okay, they're not going to be able to afford to do that as much because they've got more debt and they've got um, less incentive to go out and spend their money. They're going to put it in the bank and save it maybe. So consumption should fall, okay? Now, let's remember that the Bank of England was trying to keep uh, prices low, okay? Or get prices back down from 5% inflation to 2% inflation, make that uh, price stability target. So what happens to demand pull inflation? Well, demand pull inflation, remember, it's caused by the economy not being able to keep up with supply. If we reduce uh, sorry, the supply in the economy not being able to keep up with people's demand. If we reduce consumption, we reduce demand, and therefore we reduce demand for inflation. So that's a very basic model of how interest rates, monetary policy, is used to have an effect on the economy. Okay, um, now <coughs> what you need to think of is the opportunities and threats that changes in interest rates present to business. So falling interest rates um, would be good news for business because it's kind of the opposite of this cycle here. So it should increase, so if, if uh, interest rates fall, 
What's the impact on the cost of borrowing? The cost of borrowing falls. People's mortgage repayments fall. Their credit card debt uh, becomes lower. So it should increase consumer confidence in spending. So we've got an opportunity to expand. Okay, by um, reducing interest rates, it basically increases people's disposable income because they've got fewer debt repayments. They're not as incentivized to put money away in the bank. So their disposable income goes up. So as a business, we want to be selling income elastic products. Do we have enough income elastic products to take advantage of this fall in the interest rate? There's also going to be opportunities to increase gearing. Okay, the percentage of uh, the proportion of a business's capital that is financed by debt. In other words, debt is cheaper. It's cheaper to borrow money. So the business might want to um, take advantage of lower interest rates, increase gearing and expand. Um, finally, the, there, there will be an impact on the exchange rate. If there's falling interest rates in the UK, people from abroad who have got their money saved in UK banks, suddenly there's less incentive for them to keep their money in UK banks. So what do they do? They sell all their pounds on the exchange market. That increases the supply of pounds, cutting, uh, leading to a depreciation in the exchange rate, which means there's lots of export opportunities for British firms because British goods become cheaper. Well, what are the threats? Well, um, lower interest rates, increased consumer confidence, increased business confidence. So maybe the competition will be hotting up. Uh, your competitors are borrowing money, taking on debt, trying to steal your market share. That could be a threat. Also, consumers taking on too much debt um, could be an issue uh, because consumers may overextend themselves when interest rates are low, which will have a, a, a negative impact in the future. Okay, what about rising interest rate? More difficult to think of opportunities here. Um, we're going to have falling consumer confidence, falling spending, falling disposable income. So we need to have, if we think back to our income elasticity of demand, we need to have some inferior goods. If people's incomes go down, they're going to switch to these inferior goods um, in our product portfolio. So things like the Tesco economy range of products would be a good example of that. Um, there might be an opportunity to target savers rather than borrowers, okay? Because savers are actually going to benefit when interest rates go up. Borrowers suffer. People who have borrowed money to buy a house or buy a car, their interest rate, their debt repayments increase. However, if you're a saver and you've got lots of money in the bank, actually a rising interest rate is good news for you because you get a greater return on your savings. Um, and <clears throat> it's the older generation who have built up their uh, stockpile of savings who tend to... Um, be savers rather than borrowers and therefore maybe if you've got products aimed at the older generation there might be opportunities there. However generally rising interest rates are not really considered uh, great news for business because of uh, these threats, falling consumer and business confidence and also the rising exchange rate of course, uh, rising interest rates attracts people to save their money in, in British banks driving up demand for the pound increasing the exchange rate and um, making export sales more difficult. Okay, so quite a long video there, quite involved. Um, you know, if you've got any questions on this, ask me or uh, ask another teacher. Uh, really interesting. Um, lots of opportunities and threats created by changes in